Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here with Aaron Beard. And you have a very interesting job. What is your job? Uh, wildland Fire Paramedic. Wildland Fighter Paramedic. Fire. Fire. Can you tell us about the physical requirements of your job? Uh, to, to distill it down, we're hiking over very uneven, very rough terrain, a lot of elevation gain and loss. Um, and I'm carrying an ALS backpack as a paramedic, so I'm my loadout's going to be between 45 and 60 pounds without sustainment during those hikes. Uh, how much is it with sustainment? Sustainment being food and water. So, I mean, we figure four liters of water, four liters per gallon, that's seven pounds just in water. And then if I'm carrying food, um, I could easily be out for 10 to 12 hours without being able to resupply. So, I mean, add another 15 pounds to that. Okay, so you're running in that range. 60 to 80 pounds. 60 to 80 pounds. There is a reason that kettlebells weigh what they do. 35 pounds starts getting people in the correct condition to carry load. 24K is a weight that pretty much everybody should be able to move, but the 32K is there for a reason, because these are the weights that people have carried for pretty much all of human history, whether it be a suit of armor, or a wildlands firefighter, or a modern military loadout. You kind of stick really close to these weights. What movement patterns are you training right now? Primarily um, inside outside circle heavy club, um, inside outside mills, reverse mills, and kettlebell swing and snatch programs relative to with a focus on work capacity. Work capacity being incredibly important to somebody like you because your days are incredibly long, you're out and you kind of have to move forever. Is that correct? It's an austere environment and we don't we don't stop moving. Yeah, so they don't stop moving. So there is a difference between something like gym training and something like kettlebell training or uh, mill training, movement pattern training. If you're using tools, you should train with levers and you guys are always carrying some type of lever-based tool, correct? What are the lever-based tools that you would be using? Yeah, so it's mandatory on the fire line. There's, there's certain loadout gear we have to carry to even be on the fire line along with the certifications we, that we have to maintain. So with that, with that pack, I have to have some kind of hand tool um, it can be a shovel, what they call a bird's foot. Um, you can kind of picture it, kind of a shovel scoop, hoves kind of one end and a pick on the other. Um, so people have different preferences, but I always have a hand tool, I always have a heavy pack. Why do you like the mill and the reverse mill? What do you think it does for you in your work environment? That's a long answer. So um, being able to stand up tall and rotate um, effectively allows me to survive hiking with that kind of weight, especially um, on uneven terrain, that pack's gonna shift. I have a tool in one hand, so um, it is isolateral in that capacity. Um, so keeping my shoulder healthy, my back healthy, being able to move from my core, being able to keep my glutes and core engaged while I'm up and down really gnarly terrain with that kind of loadout, um, the mill patterns are invaluable to keep me in one piece to survive it. What are your favorite kettlebell movements that you train? So in the, recently it's been just the a kind of a basic, not kind of, a fundamental swing, and I fall in love with with the snatch programming relative to work capacity again. Snatch programming is amazing. When you do a snatch with one hand, you have cross body stabilization. If you work, you carry things, you're off road, then that core stabilization is absolutely key. Kettlebells are also light, so you can actually take them out with you to backcountry remote locations. It's very hard to drag a barbell up to fire camp. But what do you drag up there when you go up? Like on this last roll, um, I just, uh, maces and heavy clubs. Um, I am actually, I, my truck's loaded up for my next roll, which is gonna happen in two days. And I, I did bring an adjustable kettlebell with me. Adjustable kettlebell. Now you can be in the back country uh, training. You can adjust your load every day to uh, go with your work output. You have maces and clubs that go in the back of your truck. How long are you out for when you go out? So this last rule is 17 days. We can go out for um, 14 days with a seven day extension. So 21 is the max before you have to mandatorily take 48 hours off and you can go back for 21 again. So um, we're out there till the fire's out. So like this last fire I was on, it's gonna go out when the snow flies. Um, so, so the work doesn't stop in, in that regard. So you have to maintain your fitness even when you are working for a living there is a difference between working and fitness if you work all the time i know you know you just end up with a bunch of injuries something like mills reverse mills kettlebell swings kettlebell snatches help people keep their body in balance so that they can continue to work at their optimum level 
This is something that I hear a lot. People say, I work, therefore I don't need to exercise. That is not accurate. You really do need to keep training in order to keep your body balanced. Even if you're working 14 to 16 hours a day doing all physical work, doing something like mills or reverse mills really, really does help keep your core in line, keep your shoulders working optimally. And uh, when you work, you end up with a strong side. When you do mills, you try to balance out that work capacity load on the core to keep yourself essentially centered so you don't end up more hurt. If you're hurt, you can't continue to do your job. The fire does all kinds of crazy things and then people lose homes and everything else. There was a time on, the, on this last roll, um, since, since all the tools I brought with me were circular strength training tools, they were all weighted levers. I didn't bring a kettlebell on the first one. By day 10, I was craving curved linear motion. <laughs> I was absolutely craving doing snatches and swings. And, and, they, and luckily one of the REMS teams on site had kettlebells in their trailer, so I was allowed to do that. I was just fascinated with the fact that I was craving a curved linear motion eventually. I really like kettlebells and clubs because they are the easiest thing to travel with. A heavy club is still relatively light compared to a bunch of other stuff that you have out there. So you can take a mace, a 15 pound mace, a 20 pound mace, a 25 pound mace, and you're not adding that much to the transport. You can get them out to a bunch of weird environments that keep you alive, but kettlebells really do help. Alternating something like heavy clubs and kettlebells and mace accidentally will keep you extraordinarily healthy, keep your large muscle groups fired up, keep your heart working optimally so that you can continue to do your job. Um, I usually travel with clubs because they are light, but then I get the same thing. I start to miss kettlebells after a couple of weeks and I just want the heavy weight again because it's hard it is annoying to try to get your heart rate up that high with a heavy club. Think of heavy clubs as having that middle heart rate development zone, so they do two different things. Kettlebells, super high heart rate very, very quickly, so you can really get a different type of cardio response. Clubs are that medium cardio that you learn to not put the weight down, but still, you're not driving the heart rate up nearly as high. And in your job, you're way off road. Your heart rate is super yep. high all the time. And you're, I mean, you don't get to stop. It's not literally an option for you guys. Absolutely not. I just want to add one piece of the kettlebell um, relative to that, that weight uh, that, you, that I can't get, that we can't get with clubs based on the implement. Um, there's that systemic explosive core contraction on the top of the snatch. Um, when everything's firing at once, uh, that was one of the bigger pieces I was missing with the clubs. I can't find that. The rotation is fantastic and invaluable, but with that snatch programming, when you're on top, on properly on top with good lockout, there's an explosive systemic contraction in your core, glutes, everything turns on all at once, um, and then off again briefly, and then all at once, um, which is part of why I was craving that motion, I believe. What type of kettlebell program are you doing right now? What are your numbers? Is it... How do you organize your training? Let's okay, say it that so way. I, I don't do a great job of, of sticking to a program for say a mesocycle in the classic sense because um, I get bored easy. And so um, I've been running a timer with, with an adjustable kettlebell. So I don't remember where I started um, at this point. Uh, so I've been working up in two kilogram increments. I've, I started at 10 minutes um, left and right, nonstop, just swings. After about six months, I moved into a snatch program where I was doing five and five EMOM style, um, and then just kept moving the weights up from there. Um, I got up to, when I, I would do 10, so back to the swings, I would do 10 minutes, maybe for the first week, then 11, then 12. When I hit 20, I, dro I, dropped, I dropped back down to 10, but increased my weight by two kilograms. Um, so I just kept repeating that. That concept, that programming came from that dude. Um, so a very intelligent way to allow me to recover not overdo it, because overdoing it is something I do enjoy doing. Um, and it, it does bite me in the ass like not on occasion. Um, and then with the snatch programming, it's been the EMOM style um, with volume cycles. And I haven't moved into density cycles yet, but I've been playing with the volume cycle programming. That's been amazing. Yeah, volume cycle is probably where you're going to end up staying for a long period of time because of the demands of your job. You can just run volume cycles and not do density cycles during fire season at all but then that allows you to keep your hands from being trashed so you can actually do your job. 
but still get all the work capacity and everything else from it. Keeping your hands from being trashed is very, very important if you work for a living and you depend on your hands to function all the time. So you probably just stay in volume cycles for nearly forever. The great thing about a competition adjustable kettlebell, he's got set 170 pound weight that takes up an eight by eight by 11 square in the back of his truck. And he has 41 total weights in that package. He can adjust it all the way up, all the way down forever. So he can do that. He's not carting 41 kettlebells up the side of the mountain with him. He's got one package that he can use in order to accomplish the task. It's a pretty good thing for people who work for a living in austere environments. It is always interesting to talk to people who do all kinds of hardcore stuff around the world because kettlebells and clubs really do help people maintain their fitness when they need it for what they need it. I love gym training, I love barbells, I love all that other stuff, but all of that stuff is hard to drag out to the top of a mountain so that you can stay in shape. Kettlebells and clubs fill a need that nothing else can fill, movement pattern wise, portability wise, and sustainability wise. Thank you so much for the talking with me, and uh, we're going to talk more about all of this stuff in the future. We're going to make a couple more videos with him, and we're going to ask him more about his gear and his loadout, because what people carry and how they carry it is very important to understand for developing your own fitness training. You can learn a lot from people who actually carry load about what is the most important thing.